Hey guys, uh, so I've been asked to do a video about uh, planetary interaction or PI. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The first thing you need to do is decide what type of planetary materials you're going to want to make. I chose the tier four planetary material of broadcast nodes. Um, they're one of the higher end ones, a little bit more complicated to set up. I wanted to go through the all of it so that you guys would understand exactly what needs to be done for your setup. So, um, after you've decided what you needed, you are going to need to figure out what planetary, what planetary resources you are going to need to extract from your planets. So, I've already done that. And after you have figured that out, you will need to go through all of the planets in your space and scan them. So the easiest way to do that is to view a planet in planet mode. So once you have your planet pulled up in planet mode, um, we'll want to once again scan the planet. And look at the materials that you are wanting to extract from this planet. So I've already done this on this planet, actually all of the planets I'm going to show you today, and I found the location that I think is best for where I'm going to set up my little planetary colony. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is drop your command center. After you drop your command center, you will want to click on the upgrade button right here and upgrade this to the maximum. The higher upgraded your command center is, the better and more pins you can have on your planet. So after we have our command center built, you're going to want to build a storage facility. The storage facility is where our resources, our, our P0 resources from the planet are going to be stored until we pump them through the, ex, uh, the processors. So we'll, after you get your, your storage facility built, you will want to start building your uh, processors. You wanna keep everything as tight together as possible here. Um, everything that we build is using uh, power and CPU and eventually we're going to have everything linked together here. So we want everything to be as tight together as possible. So we'll get all of these guys put on. And just nice and tight here. Um, with planetary, with your planetary interaction skill to five and your command center upgrade skill to five, you will be able to run six planets, all upgraded to the highest level, which is six. Um, you will also be able to run your extractor, a storage unit, a spaceport, and eight processor, uh, eight uh, yeah, processors on your planet, as well as usually about 10 extractor heads on your extractor, which is the most that you can have on one single extractor. So we'll get all of this stuff here put down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to do your best to keep it as close together as you can. You can see I kind of just bounce it around until I come off of that red and, uh, and then I'll build it. So I'll put this last one right here. Let's go ahead and build our extractor now. So with the extractor, you can see this area kind of uh, encompassing the extractor head. That shows you as far out as the extractor heads are able to go. So we, we have the resources that I want to extract within range. So I'm just going to zoom in again here and put this guy as close as I can to that storage facility. Again, this is to minimize the power usage and CPU usage on our, uh, on our planet here. 
So after we have those down, we're going to want to start linking everything. So from your extractor, you are going to want to create a link to the storage facility. Then from the storage facility, you're going to want to create a link to your processors. So you can, this is just kind of a pipe, so we can keep pumping a lot of stuff through here. It doesn't have to be, you know, it, each link doesn't have to be from the storage facility. Uh, when I'm done, it kind of makes this nice little triangle with two areas jutting out for the additional facilities on my planet. Um, so after we have that, we're going to want to submit our changes. So we'll just click on the submit button. And now we will start getting our extracting head set up. So click on your extractor control unit and you will want to click on the survey for deposits icon here. I like to move this guy down to the bottom center of my screen so I can see everything nicely. And I always start over here with the resource that you are going to want to, uh, to extract. So on this particular planet, this is a barren planet, we want to extract carbon compounds. So I'll click on carbon compounds. And then I will start installing my extractor heads. Like I said before, uh, with my skills and with as little power as I have used and CPU as I have used on my planet, I can get 10 heads per planet. And I like to do this about every, I set it to three days, but I, I usually come back every two days and reset everything. Um, you can go out to as far as 14 days or as little as one hour better double check that I've never done the short shortest yes as little as one hour and as far out as 14 days I like to do three days so now that we have our extractors our extractor heads ready to go I'm just going to kind of narrow this down so I know exactly where I need to put these extractor heads and we're going to go like this Um, so this is a heat map on the planet right now for the for the resources that I'm extracting off of the planet. Again, this is carbon compounds on this particular planet. And you can put these however you want really, but I, uh, since this is a heat map, you're going to want to you know extract as much as you can, right? So put them on the hot spots. All right, I think that looks pretty pretty good and we'll go ahead and click the install button here this is a graph that shows you how much is being extracted at each hour and we'll just go ahead and install that program so the next thing that we are going to want to do is route the materials that we're extracting from this extractor control head to our storage unit so I'm just going to go ahead and submit these changes real quick so that our extractor control head starts actually pulling and extracting resources off of this planet. So we will go ahead and click on the products button here and we can see that our carbon compounds are not currently routed. So we'll click on it and create a route. So we are going to want to create a route to our storage facility. Now we can see here that we are trying to push 33.82% more than our link can handle. So let's go ahead and zoom in real close here, hover over top of that link and click on it, and we're going to upgrade the link. So we'll go ahead and upgrade this. And now we should be allowed to push all of our resources over that particular link looks good now we're only using 66.91 percent so we'll go ahead and create that route and let's submit again so the next thing that you're going to want to do is 
tell our extractors or our, our processors what we want to turn our tier one plant or our tier zero uh, PI resources into. So there's a lot of different ones um, for the for this particular planet. Since we are extracting carbon compounds, we are going to be making biofuels. So we will click on our uh, industry facility here and click on the schematics button and select biofuels. And we're going to do this for each one of our facilities here. We also want to route these. When I do this, I create the routes directly into the uh, spaceport. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that here. So biofuels, route those into the spaceport for all eight of these. Something important to note here while you're doing this is you do need to click the create route button twice. So after you have selected the material you want to create a route for, you click the pin that you want to drop it off at, and then you need to click create route again in order to actually complete making the route. So we've got all of that done and we know what our schematics are and where we're putting our tier one planetary materials. So let's go ahead and submit those changes. And the last thing we need to do is actually move the uh, tier zero planetary resources here to the processors. So we'll go to, there's two ways you can do this. Um, since I don't right now have anything in the storage facility, I use the routes. So we can select our carbon compounds and create a route. So we're just going to create a route for each of our processors. And after you've done that, you're done with your planet. Go ahead and click submit. And that's it. Now you're going to want to do that for each of the planets that you are going to be extracting materials from. So in my case, I'm doing six planets. Uh, so we're going to have to do that five times because one of my planets is a production planet. Let me show you how to set up the production planet now. So the production planet has to be a temperate or a barren planet. Those are the only two that will allow you to create the, uh, I don't remember which one off the top of my head, but it's either the advanced or the high tech production planet. I'll put a note in the video to tell you which one it is. Regardless on on these planets, I like to make two launch pads. Um, for me, it just makes it a little bit easier to transport the materials down from space. So we'll go ahead and get those two on. And then I like to make my storage facilities that uh, match up with the spaceports. So again, you wanna keep everything pretty close here. Don't really like the placement of that one, so. Let's go ahead and delete it and try again. All right, that is, looks about the same, but apparently that's as close as I can get it. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that with the rest of these. All right, so now we have our two our two spaceports and our two storage facilities. So for the processors on the rest of the planet, we are going to want to build a bunch of these advanced industry processors. These are the ones that turn our tier two planetary or our tier one materials into tier two materials and more, as well as tier three. The high tech is the 
um, the processor that turns our tier three PI into tier four. So we're just going to create a bunch of these uh, advanced industry facilities. Again, you want to keep these as tight as possible. Okay, so this last one that I just built is a high-tech production plant. Everything else are the advanced industry facilities. All of the other ones here you can see are the advanced industry facilities. So uh, after you've got all of those built, you are going to want to link all of these. So I just start going through and kind of spidering out from the uh, spaceports and the storage facilities. Um, again, doesn't really doesn't really matter, but try to keep your links to a minimum. Um, you, know, you don't need to make you don't need to make circular paths or anything like that. Just make sure that everything is linked and resources can get to where they need to go. So after we have these all linked up. Uh, let's go ahead and submit our changes. So now that we have all 27 pins on the planet, we can start installing the appropriate schematics. So since I, at, like I said before, the schematic that we're going to want to install here for our tier four is the broadcast node. So we'll go ahead and install that and create a route down to our spaceport. So that is our tier four planetary product that we're creating. Um, so we also need to install a tier three schematic. So on our advanced industry facilities, we're going to need to do some data chips install the chips here we're going to do some uh, high-tech transmitters create that route and we're also going to need some neocoms so scroll down here to neocoms install that schematic and create a route for it I've done this enough times that I just know what I need to build for everything. There's tons of great resources online. Um, I'll try to link a couple at the end of this video, but that's basically what you need to do. Now, um, you, can, you can see that the data chips requires super tensile plastics and microfiber sh shielding. The high-tech transmitters needs regular transmitters and polyaramids and the neocoms need biocells and silicate glass. So we're going to just go through and install the schematics on each of these for these products. So we'll be able to do three of each of these, which means that we're going to have some extra biocells, silicate glass, transmitters, polyamorids, as well as the super tensile plastics and microfiber shielding. PI scales really well. This is my 10th tune that I am setting up for PI right now. So I, I collect all the junk together and I can distribute as needed. Um, so I'll show you that in just a second, but first let's get all of these schematics installed and their products routed. I'll start with just the first couple and then I'm going to fast forward through the video. Um, I know that this is, it can be kind of boring to watch this get all set up here. So 
do these and then once I get all the schematics installed and the products routed, I'll catch back up with you guys. All right, now that all of those schematics have been installed and their products have been routed, we need to submit our changes. And then we need to get some materials out to this planet so that we can start our production. One thing I did forget to mention was when you are installing the schematics, you can type the letters to make this go a little bit faster. So say I need to install silicate glass. I can click on the schematics button here and just hit the S key and it will take me down to the silicate glass uh, material here. So, all right, everything's looking good here. So I'm going to go ahead and undock my ship. Uh, this is an epithal. This ship is made specifically for doing planetary interaction and uh, we'll go ahead and start going here. So undock. And we will go ahead and warp to the customs office and access the customs office. So you can see how my cargo hold here looks like it's empty. However, move this down. Uh, it has this planetary hold here. And the planetary commodities hold is where your PI materials go. So I, I put a bunch of stuff in here earlier just to make this go a little bit quicker. So I want to look at my office or my, uh, my pins here and see what they're named. So when I'm doing this, I usually like to leave a little bit of room in one of my spaceports so that I can uh, I have room for my tier two, tier three, and tier four materials. Always keep an eye on local, something to keep in mind, uh, especially if you live in NullSec like I do. So all of this should fit into your customs office just barely. So once I have all of that stuff moved in, I like to get safe, um, warp back to the station, warp back to a citadel, uh, whatever you need to do to get yourself safe and just keep an eye on local here. So um, each, I, you can move about 2000 of each material into the, uh, into the spaceports. Um, the industrial fibers and the oxidizing compounds as well as the silicate glass, I'm sorry, the silicone, um, they they're needed in two of the tier two materials, which means you need twice as many. That's why there's 4,000 here instead of 2,000. So let's get all of that stuff moved over. And we'll click the transfer button. We'll use this drop down menu here to switch to the other spaceport and do the same thing. And 4,000 on this one, 4,000 on this one. Two thousand, 
2,000, 2,000, and then 4,000 on the silicone. All right, so we will transfer that down. And let's go ahead and just slide that off. Now let's slide that up over here for a second. All right, so now we need to do an expedited transfer to get the materials out of our spaceport and into these storage facilities. So we'll click on the storage button, expedited transfer, select the facility to which we want to transfer our materials and go ahead and transfer them. Execute transfer, it's that easy. Do that again on this guy. Select all of the materials you want to transfer, execute transfer. Now our spaceport is empty again. So what do we do? We want to put more materials down. So the way that I'm doing this is my Baron Launchpad 1C Tech R is going to be the one with um, less materials on it. But we'll go ahead and uh, put the full amount in TD Tech. Oh, we need 4,000 of... Okay, I must have mistyped something, but we'll fix it. Another 2,000 of those. 4,000, 2,000, 2,000. And 4,000 of these. And we'll go ahead and transfer that over. Switch to our other spaceport. And transfer everything down. Before I do that, I just want to check these chiral structures. I want to figure out which of my pins I screwed up on. So we can just look at the storage facility and be able to tell which one is less. So here we can see I messed up. I only put uh, 200 in instead of 2000. Easy mistake, easy to fix as well. Just access the customs office again. Um, this is, uh, this spaceport is the one that's feeding into that. So I'm just gonna put the extra there. And we can go ahead and um, if you are if you don't have a Citadel, you can go ahead and dock up your ship at this point. If you are in a Citadel, you can just remain tethered. So let's go ahead and look at our planet again. And now we can see that we have these materials on the planet. And all we need to do is route the materials here to their processors and uh, go from there. Again, I'll do a couple for you. It does take a minute um, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of fast forward through me doing it after I do a few for you. But uh, we can see that biocells require, so uh, yes, the tier two material biocells requires the tier one products of biofuels and precious metals. So we find it some biofuels create the route and it also needs precious metals like so now I'm gonna fly through this um, instead of doing each one at a time I usually do groups of three so I'll do something like go over to this one biofuels one create that route biofuels two biofuels three create that route next one biofuels one biofuels two biofuels three and for the fourth storage facility here biofuels one biofuels two Biofuels 3. And I didn't do it on these guys, but I'll go ahead and do that real quick so I don't forget. Uh, 
And if you if you ever have any questions about how many um, how many you have, you can go ahead and or how many routes you have, you can come in here and just take a look. So we can see our incoming and outgoing. We're looking for outgoing biofuel routes, and we want to make sure that these are all unique. So we can see nine D. So that one's a duplicate nine D nine D DC. All right, so delete one of those 90s, figure out which one of these is 90, it's that guy, which one's DC, not this one. So this is the one that we need to make that extra biofuels route for, boom, right there. All right, and we'll do the same thing with precious metals. So we've got all those, then go over to our next storage facility Precious metals. You can go through this pretty quickly. Um, if you end up making a mistake, like let's say you accidentally select plasmoids and try to create a route to here for plasmoids, it's not going to work. It's going to give you an error because it's an invalid schematic, or it's an invalid material for that schematic. So we know that we accidentally selected the wrong thing, and then we can fix it. So I'm just going to go ahead and cruise through this, finish up doing all of these, and I'll fast forward through this part of the video again, and I'll catch up with you guys in a second. All right, last couple here. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right. And again, I like to just count how many I'm doing so that I know if I've missed any, it helps when you're bouncing between the different uh, storage pins and whatnot. So now kind of the crappy thing is to go through and double check everything to make sure that you have four of each incoming material. And you're gonna wanna do that for each one of these. Um, just helps to make sure that you're pulling everything that you need and you didn't mess up too bad. Uh, easy enough to figure out if you did though. Uh, let's see, everything is looking good so far. So we just go through all these one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, one, two, three, four. All right, cool. So these are all looking pretty good. I'm going to say that this planet is uh, almost done. We have our, we have our tier. Our tier one products being turned into our tier two products. Now, after we have that, we need to route our tier two products into tier three products. So I don't know if you remember, but on the when I when I was routing everything originally, I put all of my tier two products into here as well as my tier three products into this particular storage unit. So we're gonna go under routes since I don't have any of those. Actually, let me just submit this real quick uh, just in case something crazy happens. So we can go under the routes here and we can see we have our bio cells. So we're gonna create an outgoing route of bio cells to which facility is it? I guess it's this one. All right, so create that route uh, and silicate glass. So another route. And this is just because I don't have those materials in uh, this storage facility yet that I'm doing that. So create that route. What do we need for this guy? Polyamorids and transmitters. So again, we find it in the routes, right? Polyamorids, create a route to there. Transmitters, they're in here 
somewhere. Transmitters, create a route to there. And last but not least, we need some microfiber shielding and super tensile plastics up there. Microfiber, whoops. Microfiber shielding and super tensile plastics. Create those routes. All right. So we'll go ahead and submit again. Now we have our tier two products being turned into these tier three products. And you could stop at tier three products. Those will get you a fair amount of money. Um, I think if you had three tunes doing just tier three products, you could probably plex your, your account. Uh, but I like to take it one step farther. And we're going to turn all of these tier three materials into tier four materials. So again, we need to go through, find our products, and route them up to our uh, high-tech production plant. So did the data chips. Now we need to scroll through and find our high-tech transmitters. Hmm, did I pass it? There they are. High tech transmitters, create that route up to there. And the last one is the Neocoms. Neocoms, create a route up to there. Okay. And again, we want to go through and check everything, make sure that everything is routed. So we can see that we have our data chips, high tech transmitters, and Neocoms incoming, and our broadcast nodes outgoing to this storage facility right here. Right. And if we, we can double check that, 1C tech. 1C tech. All right, that one looks good. Let's also check on our tier three stuff. Make sure it's getting what it needs. Incoming, incoming. Data chips are outgoing down to that same place. And incoming, incoming, outgoing. Outgoing is going to 1C, perfect. And last but not least, incoming, incoming, outgoing. 1C, perfect. So this planet is done. And now all we do is uh, in two days time we'll come back and pull all of our materials off of our extracting planets consolidate it in the station and redistribute to our production planet and uh, we'll also have a whole bunch of um, broadcast nodes sitting here waiting for us to pull off of this planet so i uh, hope you guys found this video interesting educational i know planetary interaction isn't really the most exciting stuff but you need these materials for almost building anything worthwhile in the game, and you can make a fair amount of ISK doing so. Uh, this is Natron5150. Have a great day, and I'm signing off.